when the chaos of working from home is too much and I feel anxiety just looking around, knowing all the things I have to do and finish and start and all the people I have to talk to and all the things that are waiting for me. I feel like running away in nature. I leave the house, go for a walk. Sometimes I take my crochet project with me and I can actually make some progress as opposed to staying at home and trying to find something to watch that will be distracting enough that I don't get bored in the first few minutes, but also not too distracting so I can concentrate on my project. It's a fine line to walk and sometimes the best thing you can do for your own health is to leave the house, leave the city, the town, the village where you live and just be by yourself outside watching and listening to nature. It's the best solution I've found so far for my anxiety and my tendency to just do the things as fast as possible so I can be done with them just to begin new things that I also have to do as fast as possible and it's such a vicious cycle that I cannot get out of it. Well, I can, and I did, and I'm here, and I hope you join me on this journey where every month we will have a new episode filmed outdoors, so there will be noise as well, in whatever state nature decides to be on that specific day. Right now, it's the 2nd of August, everything is dry except the trees. All the grasses are dry or in the process of drying. The blackberries are ripening, the raspberries are on their way out, and the forest is alive with the wind. In this first episode, I will make an introduction to this new series of videos, and I will start by presenting you some examples for each of the segments that will be part of the future videos in this series. So I hope you enjoy and I hope you pick up your crochet project and come with me on this little adventure. I am working on a pattern for a cowl for an upcoming event and I spent all day yesterday trying to figure it out. I tried things and I frogged and I tried again and I frogged and I made pages of sketches and nothing stuck. I don't know why. Sometimes yarn just doesn't want to do what you want it to do. This, by the way, used to be a shawl. But since I only had 200 grams of yarn for it, it was quite a small shawl. So I decided maybe it would be better as a cowl. But now, I finally figured out what I want to do with it. Initially I had sketched a design that I enjoyed with reverse stitches and lace and interesting transitions, but it couldn't work. It just didn't want to be that pattern. So then I tried something basic, a basic lace pattern also didn't work. So in the end I decided that I would continue the series of cowls with textured stitches and that's what it will be. I will make an announcement when the event comes out after I know more details about it. As always if you want to know when events happen make sure you subscribe to my emails because I send out an email update every time there is an event or a new pattern or anything similar. So why did I bring you today with me here? Why didn't I film this at home, in my studio? Well, first of all, because I still need to do some things in the studio to tidy it up and make it presentable. I will have a separate episode about that. And second of all, because I wanted to start this vlog series out in nature. I called it Crochet Along With Me because I recently finished a series of books by and about Shirley Jackson, the writer of horror. Well, she didn't really write horror, and I think she was autistic, but that's my opinion. But she had started a novel called Come Along With Me, about this lady who left her old house behind, sold it, sold 
all her possessions and moved into a square little room in a big house. I'm the opposite. I want to be outside, outdoors, to leave the city. I don't live in a city, I live in a village. If you live in a city or if you don't have access to this kind of open space and silence, maybe you will enjoy it. Maybe you will enjoy not seeing a wall of yarn behind me and just one ball of yarn and one project at a time. Maybe you will want to crochet along with me. So I didn't call this series a podcast because I don't feel like I'm qualified enough to have a podcast, even though probably I am. I don't feel like I have enough to say about crochet and crocheters and designers and so on. But I do feel like I have stuff to say about crochet in general and about the, the projects I'm making, the patterns I'm writing up about crochet as a way of relaxing at the end of a difficult day and as a way of creating something beautiful with your own hands as a way of exploring puzzles and solving problems and coming up with new ways of using up what you have especially if you have a big stash so on some of the episodes we will probably have some technical stuff and I will also show you close-ups of my projects and we will talk about garments and garment shaping and the new pattern that I'm thinking about writing up. That will be a separate episode. It will be a sweater and I got a lot of positive feedback about it and a lot of people want to make it so I have to write the pattern but I have some issues with that <laughs> and I will explain them in uh, another episode. I was thinking of making this a series every month we have a new episode with updates and ideally in a nice location even in winter. I've noticed in some of the crochet and knitting podcasts that I've seen recently that they have a structure to the videos so we will also have a kind of structure here. I'm not sure exactly what it will be, but I guess one of them will be works in progress. I just showed you mine. You can tell me yours in the comments. We will also have uh, finished objects, what I've finished, and finished projects, which is not the same thing because in my case, as a crochet designer, a finished object is a sample, but the finished project includes the whole process. Everything from creating the sample, writing up the instructions, making a video, publishing it all. So that will be a separate segment where I finish a project. That means that the pattern is out. Another segment might be feedback from you. I would like to share a message from one person who writes a comment. In the next video, I will share one of your comments. If you have something to tell me, please share it in the comment and I will read it on the next episode. Another segment might be if I started a test for somebody. And in this episode, I want to tell you about my previous two tests that I did in June and July. And another segment might be about crochet and Tunisian crochet techniques. Something that I don't specifically cover in a separate video only for itself, but I will probably mostly make separate videos for techniques because I can then separate them better and organize them in the playlist. So if you have any tips or techniques you would like to hear from me, please also leave them in the comments and I will get to them. And as I create videos for the channel, I will use those as inspiration and as guides to know what to concentrate on. So even though I'm starting this new series, I still want to continue the series of basics in Tunisian crochet because I've only published a few videos in that and most of them are not quite so basic. But since I am working on so many projects at the moment, I usually don't get enough time to make a video for a simple stitch. But they will happen probably during the winter because I somehow take things slower during winter? I don't know. How do things work for you? I notice that if I am surrounded by things and I have so many things to do, I lose concentration and 
I don't finish anything. So that's also why I decided to come out here and not be surrounded by anything except nature. And maybe then I can concentrate and finish things and not be distracted by all the other things that I could be doing. Like starting three different patterns. <laughs> I have been known to do that when I'm at home in the studio. So let's talk a bit about my whips and you can share info about yours in the comments if you want to. As I told you, I have this whip which I'm not really working on because I'm talking to the camera. It's not a very big project, it will be a basic cow that I seam up here on the side and then it will come around the neck. It will have a nice section here with textured stitches and then another band with honeycomb stitch. Of course, I will make a video about the stitch pattern used in this project and you will be able to make your own if you want to. I'm using a 7mm hook and as I told you, yarn that used to be a shawl and now isn't. It's almost chunky yarn, I think it's a run or worsted weight yarn and it works well with the 7mm hook. And as you can see, I'm not working it in the round, even though you could if you have a double-ended hook. I only have one, so I need to invest in some hooks. Maybe I will get some interchangeable hooks and then I can make things in the round as well. Another work in progress is the project that I showed you in the last two videos. The mohair capelet, also in Tunisian crochet and also made with a 7mm hook. It's growing. But I changed the pattern a bit, so I have to look at the diagram while working for the first few rows. I thought I had other unfinished projects that I'm working on. I still have the knit shawl that's very complex and very beautiful, but it takes a lot of brain power. So I only work on it when I have some relaxation time and I need to look at the pattern constantly. But it only consists of charts, so you need to pay a lot of attention with charts. Still, I'm learning a lot from it. It's a very interesting lace pattern. Not very easy to visualize, even from the charts, because there are many pieces and they're separate. And they're not continuous. So when I make a chart, I create a continuous wedge. For example, if you have pattern repeats all around, I try to create the whole pattern in one piece and to offer it the chart as one piece so you know where you are in the project. But here you have slices of the diagram and they go up from the bottom of the page and then on the next page you have to go from the bottom again and I messed up and I started a different chart piece and I had to go back a few times so it's a struggle, but I like it and I would never add beads to it. That's overkill. <laughs> I'm working it in a gradient yarn that you've probably seen before. It's an Alize Ombre cake. As for finished projects, I can share this one, which is made in linen yarn that I bought in Milano in 2018. I was at a conference in Pavia and I took a half a day trip to Milano and found this yarn shop. I had never heard of this company, but I entered and it was, whoa. <laughs> it was amazing. They had a lot of cones, I remember, but I didn't have a lot of space in my luggage. So I bought four balls of yarn to this, this linen, which was a pale yellow, very ugly color. I don't know why I chose it. And I knew I wanted to make a summer top out of that yarn which has 300 meters per 100 grams but it works up very nicely and i also bought two tweedy woolen yarns that i haven't used yet and i was planning to make a shawl out of them maybe it will happen with tunisian crochet so i started this project last year and i only made up to this part and i had no idea what i was doing so i let it hibernate and this year, after doing a test for a top, I had enough courage 
and confidence to actually finish it. I didn't need to increase a lot more and I really like this part with the mesh and I made a mistake with the back. I made the back wider than the front so it comes a bit towards the front and the side seam isn't aligned perfectly with my side but it fits well. I also had to fix the shoulder straps but I only realized the problem with the shoulder straps and the back being baggy after I finished the edging for the underarm and the neck area and that's also a lesson learned for the future apparently I have a short torso and I need short straps so this is one of those things that I need to take into account when writing patterns for garments most people don't have such a short torso so you need to adapt the length of the project to the length of your torso so if you're like me and have long legs when compared to the upper part of your body then you need to take that into account when using any kind of pattern make sure that the straps are not too long this area isn't too open because usually patterns are made for balanced bodies but still i love this top and it feels like i wear nothing and it's perfect for summer and probably for winter as well i will try it in winter i recently stumbled upon this cotton underwear that theoretically keeps you warm because it keeps a layer of air between your regular layers and the skin i also have a finished shawl in filet crochet but i cannot share it with you yet because it will be part of an advent i will tell you more info about this when it's done if you're interested check out the yarn dyer Pook Yarns on Etsy. She creates these advent calendars that have 1,000 or 2,000 meters of yarn and it's it's luxury yarn so it's not the most affordable thing but it is a um, gift that you could give yourself or yourself. Yeah and the colorways are custom so you tell Rachel what colors you want and she will create the gradient for you. Testing. I told you I tested two projects this summer. One was a summer tank top made in cotton and it has a peplum too, but the body is too long for me, which I only realized after I measured myself much later. So I should have made the body shorter, but that's a lesson learned. And I enjoyed it very much. The pattern is by Anna Maria from Crochet Highway. I will put a link in the description to the pattern it's published now and the second one was a knit dress it's called the my tube dress it's what it says a tube that has shaping so it fits around your curves and that one is also published and it's mostly a recipe type of pattern where you input your measurements and you have to calculate how many decreases and increases for each section of the pattern and I added bust shaping with short rows and I wrote a blog post about it so you can check that out as well if you're interested but I will use all this information that I learned from testing this knit pattern to create the best version of the Tunisian crochet patterns for garments that I can because after all what i'm interested in doing whenever i test something is to learn what not to do and learn what to do in order to offer the best products for my clients which are you <laughs> if you buy my patterns so i will spend some time crocheting and i will see you in the next video if you like this kind of stuff Please subscribe and make sure you subscribe to my emails as well because usually you don't get notified even if you ring the little bell. But I always send out email updates every time I publish something new, which is at most once a week. I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you next time. Bye!